Hey, what's up there, DSL first? Today I'm going to show you how you can diagnose and fix problems with your secondary air injection system, which also includes your air pump or uh, smog pump, as some people like to call it. And I'm going to be doing this on this 2001 Audi A6. Now, this Audi has a 2.8 liter V6 engine, but after you watch this video, you'll be able to develop a pretty good understanding of uh, how the air injection system works and then apply those to really any car or make a model that uh, comes equipped with an uh, air injection system since they all uh, work very similarly. All right, so for a lot of people, the first indication that there's something wrong with their uh, air injection system is that they get a check engine light and then they get a scanner and get the codes. And as you can see, we got a P0491, which is a secondary air system for bank one and a P0492 for secondary air system bank two. Now we have two banks on this car because this is a V6. If you were uh, diagnosing problems on a four cylinder Volkswagen or Audi, you would only have one bank. Now in this case, since we got codes for both banks, this usually indicates a problem uh, with a component that supplies the air to both banks, which usually is the pump or the piping or the hose that comes out of the pump before it splits off and goes to each separate uh, bank, but not always, so you want to keep that in mind. All right, now before we get on to the diagnostic procedure, let me quickly explain what the air injection system does and what are the components that make up the system. Now I'd like to better show you all the components and stuff. I've removed the engine cover and the couple of plastic tubes that go to our air filter housing. So the job of your air injection system is to supply filtered air to your engine during cold starts and also sometimes at idle. By doing this, it, uh, it warms up the catalytic converters faster and therefore when the catalytic converter is uh, nice and warm, it reduces emissions. And I guess that's why some people call this air pump the, the smog pump. And we'll start at the air filter uh, box. This tube right here, this uh, supplies filtered air to your air pump. So it goes from here, our air filter box, down there to our air pump, which is down there towards the lower side of the engine bay area. And this tube is the tube that comes out of your air pump. And then this tube comes up here and attaches to this some piping that goes underneath our intake manifold. And from there it goes to two combi valves on the back of our cylinder heads. And here's a look at our combi valve in the back of our cylinder head on the passenger side and these are going to look very similar to an EGR valve. And on the driver's side it's going to be back there which is going to be really hard to show you. Alright now onto the diagnostics. So what we want to do first is to see whether our air pump is actually uh, kicking on during a cold start. So you want to make sure your car has been sitting for a good two or three hours or you know if you do this overnight then it's guaranteed that the air pump is going to kick in. What we're going to do is basically listen for the pump after a cold start. So it would help if you can park in your garage or somewhere that's quiet. And then you want to roll down your passenger window and that'll help uh, listening for it since the pump is located on the passenger side towards the bottom of the engine bay. And then I'm going to start the car and the, the sound this pump is going to make is very similar to a sound a vacuum cleaner makes. And if you can't hear when the engine is running, if you turn it off after a few seconds, then you should be able to hear the pump wind down. Before I start my engine though, I'm just going to put this little uh, air tube back in here so I don't get unmetered air after our MAP sensor entering our engine and then sending off the check engine light. There! Did you guys hear it? No? Oh really? Okay. Uh, well that's actually kind of good because it didn't kick in. So, so far what we got is that the air pump does not kick in after a cold start. Alright, now before we go on to how to diagnose the problem when the air pump is not coming on, let's, uh, for the sake of argument, let's say that the pump does come on. So if the pump does come on but you still have check engine lights for your air injection system, the first tube you want to inspect is going to be this plastic tube right here. This is the tube that supplies air from your air pump to your engine, to this piping that goes to your engine. And this tube tends to get, uh, this plastic tube tends to get old, dry and brittle and breaks rather easily. And it usually actually breaks towards the bottom, uh, right next to the pump itself. Now if you need to inspect it by where it connects, attaches to the pump, you probably need to raise your car, support it on jack stands and then remove the little uh, weather shield that's underneath your engine bay and then you'll be able to take a peek in there. Again, it's very important to make sure that this tube is intact completely and also it's nice and tight at the connectors uh, where it connects to the pump and this pipe up here. So if that plastic tube is intact, then next it would be to make sure that this piping underneath here is in good shape. It's, uh, you know, in my experience that that piping is usually in decent shape, but if it ever cracks, I guess then it could set off the check engine light. And the way you would check for that is without removing the air intake, your intake manifold is to, during a cold start when the pump is on, then 
you might hear a slight exhaust leak or a sound that's similar to an exhaust leak, which is just air escaping from the crack that's in this piping down here. But again, that's uh, usually not the problem. All right, so if the plastic tube is fine, the piping underneath here is not making any noise, then you want to come to your uh, combi valves. Now, these combi valves work very similar to an EGR valve. Obviously, they don't do the same thing as an EGR valve, whereas an EGR valve uh, introduces exhaust gas back into the engine, where these just introduce a filter there into the engine during cold starts uh, and warm-up. But again, the way the valve itself works is very similar to an EGR valve. It's got a diaphragm in there, and the way you test these valves is um, you get these vacuums lines off, and then you supply, get a vacuum, uh, uh, vacuum pump and a supply of vacuum to these, and then they should hold vacuum. And also, these vacuum lines are very important. You want to inspect these vacuum lines very closely. These get old, brittle, and uh, dry, and then they crack, and then uh, you get chicken engine light for your air injection system. And uh, obviously, this solenoid is important too. Other vacuum lines that go to the solenoid as well. Now, in my experience, it usually doesn't end up these guys being a problem. It's uh, usually the pump or the the relay or the fuse for the air injection pump or the hoses, especially this one right here that caused the check engine light. But if you check all those and you need to inspect these further, then I suggest you watch a video I made on how to test an EGR system. I put a link, put a video link to it on this side of the screen right here where you can check it out. And in that video, I go in depth on how these valves work and how you can test them. And also the, I would assume the similar, very similar procedure for testing these solenoids for them. All right, now, if you don't hear your air pump, uh, like in our case, what you want to do is to make sure that the fuse and the relay that are for your air pump are in good shape, and you get to those fuses and relays in a little box that's underneath here. So what we're going to do next is to remove this, uh, this plastic cover up here. Like first, remove in this uh, rubber piece, and then just wiggle this out. Then there's going to be uh, four 8mm bolts that, that hold this uh, cover on, so we're going to remove those next. Alright, it looks like actually there's another bolt back there that in order to get to it we need to remove this piece, but I don't think we really have to. We can just lift on this and then there's a look at the fuse and the relay that are for your air pump. So we're going to take them both out and test them. Here's a look at our fuse. Looks in good shape. No signs of any kind of damage. And here's a look at a relay. And you want to make sure you test this relay properly. Uh, I've done a video, a very thorough video, on how to test relays. And I strongly recommend you watch that video in order to learn how to test these relays. I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen so you can click on it. But I won't go through that procedure in this video. I'm just going to go ahead and test it on my own. But uh, if you want to learn how to test these relays, I suggest you watch that video. All right, so I just tested these two, and these are both good. So I'm just going to put them back and go on to the next step. So if both the fuse and your relay check out and they're good, then it is very likely that it is indeed your air pump that's gone bad and need to replace it. But before you go buy one, uh, you still need to verify that it is your air pump that's bad. And the way you do that is basically you need to get to the connector that goes to your air pump. Now I'm going to show it to you how to test them on this pump that's outside the car because I don't want this video to get longer, especially since this procedure is pretty straightforward. But uh, I'm not sure if you can get to this connector on this pump when you remove the shield that's underneath the car or you remove the the front bumper cover. But uh, if you do need to remove the front bumper cover, I've done a video on how to remove this front bumper cover. I did it on a Passat, but the procedure is very similar for Passat and Audi. And I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen so you can uh, check it out uh, in case you need to remove this bumper cover. And the way you test these pumps is pretty simple. Basically, you'll need a 12 volt battery source and some alligator clips and wiring to connect it to this uh, pump. Also, when you take off the connector of the pump on these cars, this is a pump from a Mercedes, air pump from a Mercedes. But uh, when you take off the connector from these cars, uh, make sure you mark which one is a power, which one is ground. The power is usually red and the ground is usually a dark uh, black or a dark color. And next you just hook up these wires and see if the pump kicks in or not. And there's the vacuum cleaner noise I was telling you about. A tip I can give you is to get one of these pumps at a pick your part uh, type of junkyard. What I do is usually just take a 12 volt battery from one of my drills and take it with me to the junkyard and then test the, the pumps that I pull off the cars and the one that's good I'll, uh, I'll buy. Also if you come down here and you test your pump and then you realize that the pump is uh, kicking in then I recommend you, you know, if that, that's, you know, I would recommend you do all the other diagnostics we did earlier. Again, you go over all of those again and then uh, you know, also obviously check the connector that goes to this pump. Again, check where the 
air hose attaches to this pump uh, that goes from this pump to your engine. Make sure that's completely intact. There's no crack. Sometimes you get a small crack on these uh, plastic tubes that you can't really see. You need to really pay attention to those. And if you do everything else right, then there's obviously a problem either with your uh, computer that's not sending the signal to this pump to kick in, or the wiring that, that's from uh, your fuse box, uh, from your computer to your fuse box, and then from uh, your fuse box to this air pump that you need to check. In my experience, that happens very rarely. It's usually the fuse, the reel, or the relay, or the pump itself, or a lot of times that tube, um, that, uh, the plastic tube that goes from this pump to your engine that you need to double check. All right, so with that said, I gotta wrap this video up. So hope this video also put out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You may also want to consider checking out some of my other videos uh, that I've made. I'll put them on the screen as video links so you can uh, click on it. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.